my name's John, welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap, as usual, has got a, a decent mixture of things. That's quite a lot of machining, especially in part two. Um, I do a lot of work on the assembly for the little vertical steam engine I've been working on. Some offset turning, some setting up uh, using a Dell gauge and the chuck, four jaw chuck work. All very interesting stuff. I hope you like it. In the first part, Mick comes down with Steak and we managed to get another nail out of the bucket for last week's giveaway for the Dell gauge. I'm going to do another giveaway this week. I'll do a little bit about that later on. There's a package come in from North Yorkshire from a lad called Tony. Uh, there's a short message. All it says is, a present from sunny North Yorkshire. Love the YouTube. All the best, Tony. Tony sent a, a package with some really nice items in. A lot of these items I will use. Uh, some of the items I already have, so I'll be going to give them away. Uh, some fantastic bits and pieces. Thanks very much, Tony. Interesting the paper. Oh, there's one. Good That'll lad. do. Champion. Let's have a look. Good boy. Terry. Terry Holick. Holick, yeah. Champion. That's a great steak. Thanks very much. Uh, a lot more or a lot less commotion than what I had last week. Anyway, if you get in touch with us, I'll get that posted off this week. I'm going to do one of that giveaway. Uh, this week's giveaway is going for three more straight by sleeves, a zero to one, a one to two, and a two to three. Uh, I bought these in the stream rally last weekend, I was the last selling quite a few of them. Uh, they're decent quality, I think I'm more than right. They could do with the polish with some scotch brake, but they're a decent set. If you want to win them or have a chance to win them, all you have to do is send me an email, that's me, email up there. And all the email needs to contain is your name. Your name goes into the bucket along with all your names and myself or Steg or Debsy or even Emmy. I'll draw it out. If your name comes out, I'll post it off to you. Completely free of charge anywhere in the world. It's just a little way of saying thanks for all the all the support I've had over the years. So if you want to win, all you gotta do, email name into the bucket. These are the most tip of sleeves for this week's giveaway. A little bit of surface on them, all I want is a, a rub with some scotch bright and it'll be, it'll be perfectly usable. I was in a steam rally last weekend with Richard uh, down at Masham. I put one or two little bits of video up, uh, some on YouTube and a little bit on Facebook. There's one particular clip I'm going uh, to put in tonight. It's of uh, one of my friends, Traction Engines, on what they call a, it's, it's like a, sort of a dyno. The, the engine has a big dynamo on the front and they take two heavy copper cables from there and they put them onto two plates into a big salt tank, a big tank full of salty water. This really loads the dynamo up and it makes the engine pull hard, really hard, so you can hear the engine work and like that's supposed to work. Anyway, I'll put that in towards the end and I'm sure you'll find that very impressive. <laughs> I 
done some work in the shop this week on all my machines on the 626mm uh, the motor went off again that's its third motor so I've bought a three phase motor with an inverter a proper package um, I've got that installed and I'm really pleased with it I've done bits of video for it and I'm going to put the bits of video up showing the, the installation probably back the end of this week if I get a chance to get it all edited anyway I'm really happy with it uh, I would like a bigger milling machine but I just haven't got room so I'm going to make the, the best of what I've got um, this has got reverse and it's got a jog function obviously a speed control it'll make the, the milling machine a lot more pleasant to use This is where the third hand would come in useful and I haven't got start that's pinning that's all it is and that swings there the tension the belt so that's gone on fairly straightforward you turn this up and that's your that's your motor's normal revs 50 hertz but you can give it a little bit more to get some more speed out of it this is set up in the factory I must admit it's a lot quieter than the, the single phase motor, a lot smoother. These are the bits and pieces that Tony sent us from Yorkshire. A lot of the stuff's new, some nice new tools with tips. There's two or three boxes of tips and luckily the tips that are here I do actually use. I've got whole lots for them. So nice dial gauge there, a metric one and a lovely box. I'll give that one to Bob because it's, it works but it can certainly do with it a good clean and a recalibrate. That's a nice engineer's jack used for on a milling machine for supporting things as you're clamping them down. There's a drill there, tip drill with coolant running through it. Interesting to have a bit clear with that. A couple of sets of feeler gauges, one of them will actually mark 1943 and it's got the ministry arrow on it. Anyway, some nice bits and pieces. That's a, an interesting item there. I don't know if anybody will recognise it, know what it's for. I know what it's for. That goes with it as well. Anyway, if you think you know what it's for, you could always drop us an email. So that's what Tony sent us, apart from this item here, that I'm keeping the last. It's a 240 volt high speed motor, it's an old one. I've had power on, it does work fine. It's got a speed controller on the back and an on off switch. Mountain thing there, once in your wires put in it. But I'm sure it'll be useful to use as a tool post grinder. Uh, possibly put a, a collet on there to take it down to the size stones I've got instead of the chuck anyway that's a splendid bit of gear really world I do like old tools it's got a speed control on the back now we need this turning around the chuck and clocking in to run 375 thou out the truth to give with it the stroke for the valve I'm going to send that drill this end and drill a small hole all the way through and I can use that small hole on the other side to mark out the 375 it'll be easier to show how it's done than actually talk about it the first thing is send that drill is inch diameter which will take away the, the drill I'm going to put through here anyway. We'll run this nice and fast using a really small drill.
Make sure you keep peeling the chips out regularly. This drill's really ambitious is to snap off in here. We're not going to let that happen. Right, that's just through so nicely there. Got a hole all the way through, which marks the centre. And we're going to use the digital readout on the mill machine to mark out the 375,000 offset. I've got the job on the table not clamped down so it's free to move simply bring that down and that centre goes into the hole clamp that down and that's that held nice and firmly right in the middle nip them up Right now it's a simple case of using the DRO, take it that way, 375 thou, put a centre drill mark in, reset it in the lathe and that should be the job done. Right so it's 375, 1, 2, 3, Three seven fifty. Three seven fifty. Now, if we drill a hole in there, that gives you the correct offset. Nice new centre drill. Right, so that's it marked. All I need to do now is set that to run through in the lathe, bore the hole, and the job should be a good one, as they say. I keep saying this don't leave drills in there, don't leave centres in there because it will have the back of your hand. This needs gripping in a four jaw chuck to run through on that centre drill mark we've just put in. The first go at making the eccentric diameter, which is that one I've left on, which means I can grip that in the chuck and I won't have any problems damaging the one we're actually going to be using. We need to set that up running nice and true. Right, and so I've used the centre just to hold it in place, that's going to get you very, very near. Right, I've got those kind of straight up and down.
Now just a case of nipping up each joint turn. Okay, so we've got a grip now. Just a light nip on them to hold it in place. Now we can put our clock cage into a centre and clock it in so it's running absolutely true. We'll also sort of make sure that it's hard up against the, the chuck jaws, which it is. Just can use this spring with a top follower. And put a clock cage on there. You can see it's not very far away, straight, straight out of the box. Put a clock cage on in daily day and so it run. Absolutely true. Junior, idiot. Ah. Right, so that's the clock cage with a longer pointer on. Okay, so straight away that's within eight thousand or so before I start to adjust it. So we simply find the high jaw which is that one. Tighten the high jaw, high jaw again, which is that one. So, if we're using it's opposite one off very slightly, tighten that one. High point there. That's a high point again. There's some strange readings off this for some reason. I'll try a different centre in there. I'm getting a better, a better reading now. I don't think the point is 100% in the centre of that. Other tool. This is my best live centre and I know it runs true. Right, so we need to find the high point which is there. So if we loosen off the opposite one slightly, tighten that one. It's getting near within five thou now. High point again. That's less than half a thou. That's pretty good. 